Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I wanted to uh, review another one of the really good books I've read this year, but I haven't de done a dedicated review for yet, and that is The Yield uh, by Tyra June Winch. A buddy read this with Britta Bowler back, I think, in April or May when I was on, when I decided to do a whole month of uh, readings by First Nations authors. Uh, Tara June Winch uh, is uh, a descendant of the oh, Wiradjuri uh, people uh, of Australia and uh, and I'd heard about this book I heard great things about this book and uh, when it came time for Britain and Buller and I to do a buddy read uh, this I think was my suggestion it might have been her suggestion I can't remember but uh, we read this book and I think we both liked it I can't remember which one of us liked it more but I will say that it is entirely possible that some of the ideas and some of the things I'm going to share with you about the book here come from conversations with Britta. And so I want to credit her with these ideas as much uh, as anybody. But to give you a basic kind of uh, plot synopsis, uh, our main character is a young woman named uh, uh, August uh, Gonda Windy. Uh, and she has been living outside of Australia uh, for uh, several years. She's essentially kind of fled uh, up family tragedy and she's gone to live outside of Australia but she comes back uh, to attend the memorial of her grandfather uh, who raised her. This brings her back to the old uh, mission uh, where her grandmother and grandfather uh, had lived uh, and that they had maintained. Uh, it's a place where her grandmother and grandfather grew up um, and not only is she coming back then to attend this memorial for her grandfather, her beloved grandfather, but she finds out that the mission itself is under threat from a mining company, and that kind of creates an even more uh, complicated plot. So the story is actually told. That That's the basic narrative story is about uh, August's return, return home, uh, her, her kind of getting reinvolved uh, with her family, her eventually kind of getting caught up in this fight to protect the mission, the place uh, where uh, her grandparents had grown up, where her grandmother lives, where she grew up, um, and also getting back in touch with her, her uh, the spiritual roots of her, her, her family, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the people from which she's descended there, in Australia and, it, and it's really a powerful story in and of itself but one of the things that makes or the thing I think that makes the yield so great is the way in which this story is structured the way in which uh, Tara June Winch creates and structures the story because there are essentially three kind of narrative threads uh, which work together to create uh, in microcosm to recreate in microcosm essentially uh, the history of First Nations people in Australia's uh, struggle with uh, and uh, abuse at the hands of white colonial settlers uh, in Australia. It's a story that here in the United States feels really familiar because in some ways it echoes the, the story uh, of white settlers here in the United States and their uh, genocidal war and destruction of First Nations people, he, peoples here. But it does all this in, in incredibly subtle and beautiful ways. We have this narrative uh, of August coming home and kind of reliving this family tragedy uh, and, and remembering her grandfather and remembering growing up and reconnecting with her aunts and with family members and with old boyfriends and with friends from school, there's kind of that homecoming story that, and her then uh, determination to try to save uh, the uh, mission uh, where her, her grandfather and her grandmother lived where she grew up. Uh, but there's also a narrative thread where we see letters written by uh, the uh, uh, religious leader, the pastor who established this mission you know, uh, long before August was ever born, established this mission uh, among the First Nations people of Australia as a way of reaching out to them, as a way of converting to Christianity, and his struggles to protect uh, those people uh, from the violence of white settler uh, society. And we get that in letters uh, that he's writing to kind of his um, boss, the person over him within the chain of command within that religious organization, and then I think most brilliantly we get um, 
August's grandfather's dictionary. August, August's grandfather's dic, August's grandfather had been compiling a dictionary of uh, Wiradjuri words, I believe, uh, and translating it into English. But and so we get the third section of the book. There's one section that's August story. There's one section uh, that's these letters from this uh, pastor uh, who's running this mission expressing all his frustration and difficulties he's having. And then there's a third section, which are these dictionary entries. And the dictionary entries go beyond just defining what the word is and what it means uh, to the First Nation group of people to which August's grandfather belongs. But it also then tells the family story. It tells the background story of August's family. And again, this is all really telling the history of the struggles and the the damage done to First Nations people in Australia by white uh, colonial settler uh, society there. And it's just done, you know, I think it all comes together really, really well to make a really powerful and beautifully told story. The writing is occasionally, I think, kind of transcendent. Uh, not always, but occasionally it is. There are some problems and, uh, and um, Britta and, and I kind of uh, talked about these in our buddy read. There are some problems with occasionally characters feel like they're being introduced for no purpose other than to, you know, give an example of, you know, something that might have happened to a descendant of these First Nation people. Uh, and some of those pieces feel like they are a little bit uh, artificial and maybe not completely necessary to the story. And they seem to be about introducing ideas and characters, even though they don't contribute anything to the plot. I think that's true. But for the most part, I think the book is structured brilliantly, and I think that it is uh, very well written. I think it tells a very powerful story in a pretty unique way. I don't want to give you the impression that you are beaten over the head with this uh, history of the way in which uh, First Nations people in Australia were treated. It is done incredibly powerfully, sometimes subtly, so in the end you see it uh, and you feel it uh, very powerfully in the way in which the characters uh, react in which all the characters think about um, themselves and think about their relationship to one another. And it's just a really good book. I hope that makes sense. If you've read uh, The Yield, I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below. If you haven't or have questions, I look forward to those in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching.